I feel to start this today with Isaiah chapter 65, verse 23 and 24, and Daniel chapter 9, 19 through 23. I I love the spirit that I feel here. There's unity here. There's such a great uh, spirit in this place, and, and I'm honored that you have had me come, and and uh, thank you for the hospitality basket and, and everything that you've done for me. I'm very, very grateful, but I am here in the divine will of God, and things are going to happen today. Amen. Isaiah 65, 23, and 24, they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. I could put the mic down on that right there and just let that soak in. Daniel chapter 9, verse 19 through 23. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O my God. For thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And whiles I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. A whiles I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. I want to preach to you this morning from the subject, and while I was praying, and while I was praying, it's going to happen this morning while we're praying. You don't have to believe me, but it's going to happen this morning while we're praying. Would you just join with your neighbor in unity right now and open up your spirit in agreement that God is going to do a miracle in your family this month. Would you do that right now? And by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of the Lord Jesus, I bind every demonic spirit that's attacked this church corporately or individually up this summer. I command it to flee right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. As of right now, the tide reverses and miracles and revival will break forth in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak life into every home every marriage, every family, every situation, and every sickness. And I plead the blood of Jesus, the word of God, the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost, against everything hell has tried to do. Would you clap your hands in agreement? And would you lift up your voice and thank God what's about to take place? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Now, I know that I'm not the only one that is guilty of this, but I am guilty of praying for something to happen that I need God to do and not actually expecting that while I'm praying, anything is happening. If you have a prayer life at all, you've had times praying where you were praying but not expecting that what you're asking for is actually being released right now from the heavenlies. Because we are flesh, and flesh, no matter how you dress it up, will always be flesh. And therefore, to tap into the spirit of expectation requires flesh to be sacrificed. And sometimes it's difficult to step into expectation when you are in the flesh. One of my heroes that was a powerful man of God was a man by the name of Verbal Bean. Does anybody know who Verbal Bean was? 
Verbal Bean had a prayer life like nobody in this world. He prayed hours and hours and hours and days and days. He was very connected. And he wrote books on prayer and works of the Holy Ghost and very powerful things. But, but he, he was so connected. Let me give you a for instance. He was so connected. One time he was called by a pastor to, to come preach. And he said, I don't feel to come. And for two years, the pastor asked him to come. And he did not feel to go. And then one Monday morning while praying, God said, call the pastor and go now. And pray there in the sanctuary until Wednesday. And then preach for him Wednesday through Sunday. And so he called the pastor and said, the Lord wants me to come now. And he wants me to pray at your church from now until Wednesday. That would shock some of us if God asked us to pray for 48 hours straight because we haven't prayed four minutes straight. But Variable Bean could do this. And so he, he, uh, he called the pastor and said, this is what the Lord said. The pastor said, come on. So he drove. He'd never been to the town before. Drove in the town. And he went to the church and found the key under the mat. And he walked up to the third row and prayed over there for a while. And then he walked on the platform and prayed on the platform for a while. And he walked back in the sanctuary. And he did this for two days straight. And so he got dressed in one of the Sunday school rooms Wednesday night before church. And he walked out to the pulpit and they introduced him. And when they introduced him, he he said, I I got here Monday and I, I went right over there to that third pew and I prayed for an hour. And then I walked up on the platform and I went back and forth and I prayed for an hour. And then I walked over here and he's describing what happened. And he, as he's describing it, he said, and the spirit took me out of this building. And we, we went one mile left out of the, out of the, out of the parking lot, left one mile. And then we took a right on such and such street. And then we went a half a mile and took a left on such and such street. And we passed four houses and went to the fifth house. And he said, and he names the address of the house. And then he said, the spirit took me inside the house. It was a four bedroom house. We walked past the first three bedrooms of the fourth bedroom in the corner. There was a bed and there was a dresser and there was a chest of drawers. He said five drawers and the third drawer was open. There were three dead babies inside the drawer. And he said three human spirits were killed inside this house and if you will confess God will send revival to this city that will not be stopped for a long time and if you do not God will shut this thing down it was the pastor's house and he had been hurting his three children for years in that house he resigned on the spot verbal being preached there 27 straight weeks the revival broke out so far Hundreds received the Holy Ghost. And even they even brought a new pastor in during the revival. This is how connected he was. I could tell you several stories, but the reason I brought him up is because he, he, he said that there were two types of prayer that God answers. If you're tired of prayers not being answered, let me help you. There are two types of prayers that God answers. He said the first type of prayer is a memorial prayer it's a prayer that you pray over and over and over and once you've prayed it enough times god out of nowhere answers the prayer like cornelius who prayed so much that the angel said your prayer has come up as a memorial before the lord he said he he likened it to a suit that a man would want to buy at a store but could not afford the suit and so he would take part of his paycheck and go to the suit store and put the suit on layaway and make a payment and the next time he got paid he would take whatever was left of his check and go in there and make another payment he would leave the store without the suit each time he made the payment but he knew if he kept me shut up if he kept making enough payments how many people in here are about two or three payments short of your loved one coming back to the house of God I dare you to get faith out again that says God is still going to do it here's another payment So I tested it. I wanted to know. My grandpa just 
died in April out of nowhere. Felt great, strong as a horse. Felt great at dinner and had chest pains and fell over dead. My grandpa and my grandma have two, two boys, my dad who's 58 and my uncle who's 63. For 63 years, they've prayed for my uncle to come to God since he was born. Never been in church. Never had the Holy Ghost. 63 years, they prayed. And two months before Grandpa died, he went down to Colorado where my Uncle Scott was, and, he, and my family all lives in Alaska, and, and they, they took him to church, and he liked the church. And so when Grandpa died, we were all up there for the funeral in Alaska, and my uncle comes up, and the funeral's on Thursday. And on Wednesday night, he walks down to the altar, and he raises his hands. And he begins to speak in tongues. And when I, I was right here watching it. And when it happened, I said, that is a 63-year memorial prayer that hell said over and over would not be answered. But God will get the last word, period. Oh, I feel like preaching right now. God will get the last word in your family's situation. But you've got to keep praying. You've got to keep making the payment. It's amazing to watch your grandmother's mourning face turn to a facial expression of joy as she sees her boy speaking in tongues after she's prayed 63 years. That's the first type of prayer that gets answered. But the second type of prayer that gets answered is what I want to focus on. And that is a current prayer, he said. A current prayer is something you do not have 63 years to wait for God to do it. You do not have six months. You need God to answer this. You need direction now. You need the miracle now. You need to be healed now. You need the, the situation to resolve now and so to for this kind of answer you can't pray a memorial prayer where you go down in god in your timing and your will lord bring it to pass bring them back to that's a memorial prayer but a current prayer requires desperation to such a level of intensity that you cannot fathom leaving the altar without god doing something about what you're praying about See, a lot of us have current problems, but do not know how to pray current prayers. We have real storms, but we don't scream out, Jesus, help us in the storm. We act casual in the altar on Sunday when all hell is breaking loose in our house Monday through Saturday. But we want to act dignified in front of our fellow saints on Sunday. And that's why the situation remains unresolved. But if somebody took desperation out and said, I do not care what you think about me, I have got to have an answer from the almighty God that is what brings miracles into the atmosphere somebody claps so loud the devil can hear you hallelujah hallelujah and the Lord spoke to me said test it and I will tell you some things that have happened but it's in his word when you pray a current prayer God answers while you are praying remember Hezekiah God said he's going to die Isaiah go tell him he's going to die set his house in order and so the preacher said go set your house in order God said you're going to die Hezekiah turns to the wall and begins to repent and immediately before the preacher could get out of the palace God said go back I've just given him 15 more years that's called while I was praying 
Elijah was going to ask God to send fire down. And 63 words into his prayer meeting, he never got even a chance to ask for God to send the fire. But while he was building up some praise momentum, God stepped out of heaven and said, I know what you want already. I can tell by the desperation in your voice. Oh, the Bible said Jonah was in the whale three days and then he prayed. Now, that's some serious pride. I mean, I'm not the most spiritual guy, but you give me three seconds in a whale. I'm praying. Three days. I would have sent a shark if I was God. Like You're going to sit there for three days and still not pray? But as soon as he prayed, instantly God spoke to the fish. Because God is a God that does answer prayers immediately. But we don't believe that in America. That's why it happens all over the world. But in America, you've got to pull teeth to get them to believe that God actually can heal you before you get to your house this afternoon of the disease that's inside your body. Yes, he can. And yes, he wants to. And faith is going to erupt in here. And he's going to heal people today. Miracles are going to happen today. (laughs) So, remember when Peter was in jail and and James had been killed and they, they were going to kill Peter the next day? So the church said, we know how we can get him out. We'll pray all night. And while they were praying, There was an angel already in the jail cell. That's called Godspeed. (laughs) And gets Peter out, and he goes and knocks on the door of the prayer meeting. Uh, Who is it? It's Peter. Can't be. We're praying for a miracle for you. God doesn't work that fast. See, we're going to pray all night. Then tomorrow morning, they're going to change their mind and delay the execution. And then we're going to pray again. And then by Thursday, God's going to somehow change the king's mind. And because we've got God figured out, because we've got God's patterns figured out, he did it like this before. Let me tell you, your God will never be put in your little box. He cannot be bound by what your brain thinks he can do. His ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. He may have did it like that before, but that does not mean he'll do it like that again. God can do brand new things. Oh. <laughs> they say, we're, we're praying for a miracle. And God said, yeah, it's, it's already at your door. There's the problem. We believe God can do it, just not right now. So I tested it. I said, okay, God, let's see some stuff happen. And I've been blessed in the last three and a half years. I mean, I have seen 7,000 people in the last three and a half years get the Holy Ghost. The dead raised. I've seen great things. So you can't convince me. You have a really hard time convincing me God can't do stuff. You get the wrong preacher here if you want that. But, 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 but I wanted to see God do some things while we were praying. So I stood up and I just preached it. And I said, if you'll have faith while you're praying... God's going to start answering situations. In the altar call that night, it was in Bellevue, Florida, and there was a 12 or 11 or 12-year-old girl, I think she was 11, and she was in the altar, born with scoliosis, had never touched her feet due to the massive hump in her back. And she's in the altar, and no one's praying for her. But she had faith that if I pray right now, I've never touched my feet, but I'm about to touch my feet right now. Boo, I feel the Holy Ghost because I have a God that can answer me before I call. And while I'm speaking, oh, I like what I feel here. There's faith in the. And in that altar call when no one touched her, 
they begin to scream because when they were looking at her, she prayed in front of their very eyes. The hump disappeared in her back, and she reached down, and she touched her feet. It's t- Oh, I wish I had some kids right now. They have some faith. God can use you. God can touch you. God can heal you. It doesn't matter what anybody else around you thinks. Somebody give them a current praise right now. Give them a desperate praise. I need you, worship. I love you, Jesus. So, <laughs> so I went from that service to Merced, California, and I thought, well, I got the scoliosis girl to talk about, so that's one thing God did. So I got up and I said, God can do the memorial answers, and and last week, God answered a current prayer, and I told that story. But before I get to the pulpit, I thought, okay, what's going to happen tonight? And in the song service, see, God does not like to share glory. He wants all of it. And if he gets all of it, he'll do things no one on this platform can do. <laughs> so we're in the song service, and I'm just like, well, God, what are you going to do after I preach tonight? He said, I had planned to move before you preached. You know, you, 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 I know this is going to shock some of you, but you know God could do some crazy stuff in here on Sunday mornings before he even gets to preach. I, you've got faith. This church has faith. It could really. I know you shouted down on Sunday night, but there's something in here on Sunday morning that's really powerful. It's really deep in here. There's something powerful in here. (laughs) So, you can be seen. So, there's a deaf lady right here, and she's on the front row, and they're singing, and I'm planning my little sermon. (laughs) And she starts praying. 50-something years old, she starts praying, and while they're singing, and while she's praying, and while no one's in the pulpit, she starts screaming, because God opens her ears to let everyone else know that what the kid's about to preach is true, because if you have some faith on the front row, you don't need the preacher to lay hands on you. You need faith that God can do it right now. He's going to get all the attention. He's going to get all the glory. He's going to get all the praise. So that night, another lady came to the altar, and she, she received the Holy Ghost, and and she, uh, they said afterwards, she, had, she said that she had prayed for the Holy Ghost since 1959. <laughs> That's a long time. But she said, I made up my mind, I'm getting it tonight. That's called, she stepped into current praying. So uh, the next week I was in Modesto, and I said, well, I got three things to say now. I got the scoliosis girl. I got the deaf lady. I got the 1959 lady. What's going to happen tonight? And so, I prayed, we had everyone come to the front, prayed the prayer of faith. People started getting healed. One lady was blind in her left eye, been blind for years, and the blood had filled her eye socket. And when she opened her eyes after raising her hands, the blood was completely gone. Her eye was completely whole. She could see it. One girl in the, on the choir loft, when we started praying, what, what, she had a knot, a, a cyst in her neck. She put her hand on the knot. The only problem was the knot had disappeared before her hand could touch it because that's a God thing. That's a June. But there was a guy up in the balcony, and we had several miracles. There was a guy up in the balcony, and he came down. He was bouncing all around, like 20 years old, 22 years old. And I, he, it was his first service, and he, he said, I got, hey, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, I love it when people do not know protocol, and they're just real. I, I love real people. I can't stand the fake, you know. Dignified. I'm in heaven already. <laughs> you're, you're not a good worshiper if you're in any way. So, um, so. <clears throat> He comes down bouncing all around. He said, hey, I gotta, can I say something? I said, yeah. He said, I want to show you something. He said, this was Thursday. And he pulls out his phone and shows me his bike crash at 90 miles per hour Thursday night. He, and he is covered in blood. His legs are covered in blood. The scene is gruesome. He said, that was Thursday night. Tonight was my first service. 
He said, they brought me in. They set me down up in the balcony so I could be away from the people. He said, I sat there and I couldn't move. He said, I'm just in extreme pain. I shouldn't even be here. He said, but I, God, God saved my life. So I'm, I was going to come to church. So I, I sat up there. He said, and when you were preaching about how God could answer prayers, he said, I thought, when he's done preaching, I'm going to go down there somehow and I'm going to pray and God's going to heal me. And I thought he was going to tell me that's what happened. He said, guess what happened? I said, you came down? He said, no. As soon as I thought that. He said, I don't know how to describe it, but something came over my body. He said, you're not going to believe me, preacher, but the wounds have disappeared from my legs like they never have. That's a God that can do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. From there to Ohio, there was a guy blind. Prayed for, I prayed for that guy every time I go to this church. Never. Nothing happened. I prayed again. Nothing happened. And this young guy, about 18 years old, was following me around all the altar. He was following me. I thought he was a stalker or something. He was just following me everywhere I, where I went. He wasn't my, uh, my um, cadet or whatever. He wasn't my armor bearer. He was just, I thought he was just weird. <laughs> I prayed for the blind guy. Like I always do when I go there and nothing happens. And I turn around, the kid's just like crying, like staring at me. I said, oh, let's try something. Let's have the kid with all the faith pray. Because apparently my faith isn't where it needs to be. So I just took the kid's hand and said, watch. I set the kid's hand on. I was trying to get rid of the kid. Only problem was I didn't get rid of him. Because by the time I got to the platform, he was on my tail. And he said, Brother Harry, God just opened the blind man's eyes. He can see. While he was praying, God said, I'm here. Anybody believe God is here right now? I'm almost done. But, so, so, uh. It's not just physical stuff. There's, there's other miracles that are not physical that you need God to do in this room. There was a guy in Nashville, Tennessee, that had not heard from his daughter in three years, didn't know if she was even alive. And he's in the altar praying to hear from his daughter. And while he's praying in the altar, his phone starts vibrating in his pocket. He's praying to hear from his girl. He looks at the number, doesn't recognize the number, and something says, go answer it. He stops praying, runs out the back door, and says, hello. And she said, Dad, I need a relationship right now with you. You can call it coincidence. I don't think so. I know about a God that if I believe he can hear me, he will hear me. He will hear you. There was a guy in Ohio. I told that story in Ohio. And this guy had not heard from his boy in forever. And he said, and it had been years. And he said, I'm going to try it. He walked down the altar and said, I'm going to hear from my son. I want to hear from my son, God, in Jesus. And he wrote down crying, went to his car that night, got out of the church, altar call, went to his car. And his mom had called. So he called his mom back. Hey, mom, what's going on? She said, your son just called. And he just booked a ticket to come see you. He said, when did this happen? She said, about 10 minutes ago, while he was praying. I'll close with this. So this is, all, this is all in the last six months. It's happening in America. And I believe I've asked God to remove every church from my calendar that does not want stuff to happen and expect it to happen and replace them with churches and people that have faith that it's going to happen among them. And I am here in the divine will of God because you have been praying for big things to happen and you're starting to believe that they're actually going to happen and that's why God has sent me here to activate your faith to step into that dimension where it's going to happen and you expect it and that's what's going to move things. It's going to happen here. 
And so I had a friend, uh, an acquaintance, a guy in, in San Jose, and he, and he came to me in the service and said, Brother Herring, he said, my wife and I have been in a custody battle for her two, bo- her two kids for the last three years, and not our kids, but her kids from her first marriage. He said, when, when she lost the kids to the former husband, the, s- the day he got them, he's told them, you will not mention God, you'll never go back to church, don't even ask. And for three years, he's defied their every, won't let them pray, everything. Financial reasons, he got the kids. And he said, for three years, we have prayed and nothing's happened. And we've got a court date coming in a couple months. And I said, his name is Nathan. I said, Nathan, what's the longest fast you've done? He said, three, three days. I said, you're going to go on a longer fast. And I'll talk more about fasting this week, Lord willing. The power of it. He fasted. And I said, when it gets close to the date of the, tr- of the, the court date, I want you to call me or text me. And I want you to tell me because I want to pray. Okay. So a couple months goes by, Pastor Tuttle, and I am in Indiana preaching. And I get a text during one of, the, one of these crazy services. And I look, after the church service, I look at my phone and say, hey, J- hey, bro, it's Nathan. Uh, tomorrow morning, and he, he's, he's up in Oregon now for the, for the court date. And so I'm in the East Coast. He's on the West Coast. And he said, uh, tomorrow morning um, at like 8 o'clock, I think it was, is, is the court day, 8.30. He said, would you pray? I said, yeah, yeah sure. I texted him, yeah, I'll pray. And honestly, I, I, was, just, I was just responding. I was, I was intending to pray. But I was so caught up. And we had a blind girl healed that night, just crazy stuff. So, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'll pray. And I forgot about it. So the next morning, I forgot to pray for that situation. That afternoon, I'm at the church praying for my service that night. It's like 2 o'clock. So it's 11.30. It's, it's 11 o'clock on the, on the West Coast, 2.30, somewhere in there. And I'm walking around the sanctuary, Pastor, and it hits me. You forgot to pray for Nathan's miracle. And I thought, oh, it's three and a half hours. It's done. And I start repenting. God, forgive me. I told him I'd pray, and I forgot to pray. And as I'm walking around repenting, God spoke to me and said, intercede now. And I mean, I just hit it. And started warring for whatever. I got done praying. I text Nathan. I said, hey, uh, it's probably too late, but I'm praying. He said, bro, the judge just went into his chambers just now to decide who gets the kids. I said, what is the judge's name? He texted me the name of the judge. I said, thank you. I'm going to start praying right now specifically for this judge that God will send angels into his chamber and that when he comes out, the miracle's going to happen for your family. He said, okay. I said, I'll let you know what happens. So I began to war. One hour later, he calls me. He said, here's what our attorney told us when we got to the court date this morning. He said, that when we got to the court, the, our own attorney said, you need a miracle. You don't have enough evidence just because he doesn't let him go to church. The judge, when he went into his chamber, said, you don't have enough evidence for me to overturn this at all. But when he came out of his chambers, he said these words. I'm not sure why I'm doing this, but while I was in my chambers, I changed my mind. I know when that happened. It happened when I was walking around the sanctuary praying. Is there anybody that believes God's going to give you a miracle? God's going to give you a miracle. Stand and clap your hands to the Lord Jesus and lift up your voice and worship him.